Hello, lovely listeners. Welcome to In Harmony with Vitality, where we empower your journey, embracing your vitality to unleash the potential within. My name is Eva, and I am Marta, and together we are your hosts, certified integrative nutritional health coaches and moms on a mission. We are here to guide you through the maze of health and wellness, steering clear of fat diets and one-size-fits-all solutions. We believe in a personalized approach, tuning into your bio-individual needs, embracing and honoring your uniqueness, and making decisions based on your inner wisdom. Our podcast is not just about facts and figures. We are here to bring you light, interesting and entertaining conversations all backed up by science. Expect a blend of knowledge and the laughter as we explore the world of wellness. In speaking of exploration, we're not just your host, we're fellow explorers on this journey. Throughout the episode, we'll be sharing our own experience in health, wellness, parenting, in life. Our hope is to inspire and motivate you to make positive changes in your life. Whether you are a seasoned wellness enthusiast or just starting your journey, we've got something for everyone. So get ready for a dose of vitality, wisdom, and a touch of humor on In Harmony with Vitality. Join us, we navigate the exciting adventure towards a healthier, happier, and more vibrant you. Because life is a symphony, and together, let's find our harmony, empower your journey, embrace your vitality, and unleash the potential within you. Hello and welcome. For those who don't know me, I'm Marta. In the previous episode, we talked about the dimension of physical health. And today, we want to delve into the dimension of mental, emotional health. Normally, in other places, you will see that this dimension is divided into two. But as they are so closely related, we have decided to explain them together. What, what does the mental dimension encompass? It covers the functioning of the mind, such as emotions, beliefs, self-dialogue, personal narratives, thoughts, attitudes, and the skills we want to face life's challenges. As for the emotional health, it is your ability to feel, to be present, and manage all the emotions that arise during the day. It also includes how you relate to yourself and others. The benefits of having good mental emotional health include, for example, a stress reduction, a better move, improved self-esteem, and increased resilience. And in this episode, we would like to give you some ideas on how to improve this dimension, which is so important as everything begins with the mind. Okay, the first tip or the first idea that we want to share with you, it is practice mindfulness. Okay, I think it's very important to be present and aware, you know, eh, to use this on normal task. Like, for example, um, when you're taking sour, for example, is you always think, you know, so many things, but you are not... Um, You're not you're there. N- yeah. You're, you're not, not paying attention no. on what you are doing at the moment. Totally. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. You, your mind is in everywhere. So just be present, be aware of what you're doing. Just yeah. Yeah. I, I also think it's like, you know, it's a great moment to to start practicing this mindfulness because it's like five minutes. How, how long time do you spend in, in the in the shower usually? Like five, ten minutes. So It is really a good time just to be there and, you know, feel the, the water as it uh, caresses your skin or how it feels on, on, on your body or when you are massaging, for example, you're washing your hair and you're massaging your scalp. It's like, you know, just be present and, and enjoy because mm-hmm. what, uh, as you mentioned, that's why it's like mm-hmm. most of the time what happens is that we jump into the shower. It's like, Okay, just uh, quickly take a shower. But meanwhile, I'm thinking about, okay, so I uh, once I'm out of the shower, I have to do this and that and that. And tomorrow I have to do this and that and that. And you're actually not there. Mm-hmm. And um, 
and I feel uh, uh, I have the same experience uh, with eating. Yeah, for uh, example, yeah. Yes. That's a good example. That many times I, I see people just sitting in front of the computer and showering in the food in, into their uh, mouth and really not being there, not being present, not actually not tasting the food. And uh, also it's just not chewing the food, you know? No, um, no. you swallow and, it. <laughs> yes, exactly. And uh, it happened to me um, when I, I became a mom. Uh, what happened to me is that, uh, you know, once the kids started to eat as well, um, not just breast milk, so um, meals became a bit um, hectic because, you know, when when, kids are, when you're eating with uh, very young kids, uh, they're always asking for something uh, that is not on the table or they spill over the, the milk or the water or whatever. So um, during one meal, I would get up like five to 15 times. Yeah. And... And when I have 30 seconds, I'm like, everything is just going in as, as fast as I can. And I realized that uh, now that the kids are in, in preschool, I have the time and the opportunity to just to sit down and, and eat. And in the beginning, I was eating the same way, like mm-hmm. everything in as fast as possible because I don't have time. And and it was a really uh, cool exercise that I started to incorporate into my day-to-day life that you know, when I have the opportunity to just sit down and chew and, and enjoy my food, it's just, just do it. So it, um, I, I think it's, uh, these are small tips that you can start to incorporate into your, your everyday life. Yeah, one, one other tip that I would like to um, include, um, to be present or to, to chew more the food that you're eating is to count at yeah, the beginning, as well. it, it is a little bit boring, and but it will help you to mm, to touch the yeah, yeah, to be to be there, to be there, yeah, know? as well, yeah, and it's also a great uh, a great help for your digestion because mm-hmm. you know you you start digesting in your mouth, and many times we we just chew our we are not chewing the food uh, thoroughly, and then our digestion is is suffering. It's so yeah, that's totally true. Mm-hmm. and yeah. gives you a you can obtain more benefits from the food yes as well yeah totally so there are many many um how many little ways you can start incorporating mindfulness into your everyday life mm-hmm. yeah it's just uh, when you're doing these everyday uh so-called normal tasks just be there and pay attention yeah don't overwhelm it- at the beginning just do it little by little but just try to incorporate. Yeah, what I also do is, uh, for example, when I'm traveling for work, um, I have to take the train. So mm-hmm. I, uh, I travel for about uh, 40 minutes on the train. And many times I take this uh, time to just look out on the window and, and look at the scenery and, you know, um, notice uh, people around me, notice what they are doing, which is usually they are looking at their mobile phones. Um And it's interesting, you know, just to see, just to be present and be aware of what's going on around you. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. And uh, to keep moving, um, another idea, it would be to uh, challenge negative thoughts, replace Mm. them with positive, motivating, uh, uh, motivating, I'm sorry, and And constructive ones, you know, this, I think this is very important because a, a lot, many times of the day, of the day, we are thinking or we uh, put not good, uh, negative thinking on our mind. Totally, you know? yes. And, and I we, think we are not even aware of that. That was, that, that was. That's what I wanted to say, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I just took the word out of your mind. Here, take. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> But it is so true, and I think it's it's a really good tip because uh, we are not aware of our our thoughts. Mm-hmm. So you, when you start to pay attention on your like what thoughts you are having, and and you are realizing like wow, am I really thinking that? Yes, yes, it is powerful. Being aware is like wow. <laughs> yes, yes, and I think it's it's a very good opportunity to start practicing it when um, when you are. Um, for example, you are looking at uh, social media. Mm-hmm. There, uh, many times you don't realize how much, uh, how many negative ideas you have, or when you are uh, 
in general, when you are consuming uh, information and you are not yeah. realizing how much information you are consuming, uh, you, you just have to start to be more aware of, uh, of what's going on, you know? Yes, um, you're right. Like uh, all the news you are uh, watching or the social media you're consuming or, or if you are uh, taking public transportation like uh, I do, you will realize that you have screens everywhere. And on mm-hmm. the screens, there is all, all the time either some anon- uh, ads, they are sa- trying to sell you something, or uh, the news are going on. And what kind of news and what kind of information is coming from there? So it is, uh, it is really powerful to stop and be conscious about the information and the thoughts that you are uh, connecting with those information. Yeah, don't be afraid to select the information you want to see. No, 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 totally not. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Yeah, start thinking or really what is uh, useful for you and... What serves you, yes, exactly. And how the information that you're consuming is making you feel. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, yeah, and also people around you. Yes. What kind of people around you... Um, is gives you mm, how how w- w- will you say how they about? make yeah how 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 they make you feel and um, you know when you spend time with people um, kind of because I have been with them forever and uh, I don't want to be rude or it's kind of a loyalty thing mm-hmm. but when you are uh, when you met them and after that. Um, what kind of thoughts are rising and what kind of feelings are you having? Is it, is this relationship serving you or is it making you, pulling you down? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you need to be aware of those kind of people that are yeah. around, uh, around you and yeah. don't be afraid to select the ones that you really like. And yeah, and I'm, to... uh, I think neither of us is, tell, uh, is saying that, you know, you have to stop seeing these people. It's just... No, it's uh, you, you just have to be conscious of how much time you are dedicating to them. Mm-hmm. Because I do understand that, you know, you have friends from uh, forever and you still have some, you know, you have a long history and you did have a good time together and, and you you still have uh, kind of a good time. But if it's not serving you, just limit it. Yeah. Yeah, that will be a good tip, you know. Don't eliminate mm-hmm. it, but just yeah. reduce the time. Yeah. Also, another idea would be um, stress management and meditation. Oh, mm. I love meditation, but I know that a lot of people, they are not, they don't really like meditation. But really, you can meditate in so many ways. You can walk, for example, in the nature and listen, to, you know, the, nat- the nature. And that will be one kind of meditation to connect with yourself. That's yeah. the main goal of meditation, to connect with yourself. Yes. Um, and uh, as much as we connect with, with ourselves, as much we will know ourselves. Yes. And that's very good. You know, try to see which kind of meditation is useful for you and try it. Try it for five minutes at the beginning. Then yeah, increase totally. time. Yeah, meditation is a great thing. Although I think many times uh, when people hear the word meditation, it's like uh, so you have to, I have to sit still like the yogis and um, chanting Om or whatever. In and um, if you are not in this world, your your first uh, thought might be that wow, that's not for me. And even though, for example, I'm a yoga teacher and I have been practicing yoga for over a decade, sitting down and um, you know, just staying still and meditate, it's not for me. I can't do it. Uh, so I think it's really important to to find your bio-individual way uh, for meditating. For me, for example, it is, um, I love hot yoga and that's, <laughs> that, that totally disconnects my mind, you know. Uh, when I'm in a hot room and doing the, re- uh, the sequence that is all the time the same, it's just such peace and and you know my mind i I can just disconnect from my day totally 
so uh, I think it's the most important is to find that kind of um, meditation form that works for you. Mm-hmm. Yes, very important. And stress management, I think that's that's a huge topic, and and we should talk about uh, that in in another uh, episode. We should uh, dedicate a full episode to that because stress management is is huge, mm-hmm. and um, I think everyone could benefit from that. <laughs> Yeah, we will we will talk about that in other episodes. Yeah, okay. I think also it's, it's very important to mention uh, diet, your food mm, when yes. we are when we are talking about health, uh, mental and emotional health, and it's something I think many people wouldn't think about that uh, you know your diet can have an effect on your mental or your emotional uh, well being. Uh, that that uh, topic totally fascinates me and. Um, well, I think you too. Yes, <laughs> this is, is your niche. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I really love it. And and it's really connected uh, with your emotions, what you eat. So that's why we always um, mention about the connection between, well, the connection with yourself. You know, mm, you need to watch what you eat because depends of what you eat, you will have one or other emotions. When you are sad, your body asks for ice cream, something sweet. Chocolate. Chocolate, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's very, very uh, connected, uh, the what you eat and your emotions. So Totally. And actually, there is another topic that can come in here. It's uh, emotion eating. That could be, uh, we could talk about that later in another episode. It's uh, how, you know, when you're emotionally not... Uh, feeling balanced or or safe how you are um compensating it with food and then how it can create a vicious circle uh but totally yeah um the fact that uh, the food that you are eating is is affecting your uh, microbiota Mm -hmm. and so your gut health um is affected by the food and by your gut your mental um state is uh, affected either a positive or a negative way. So it is mind-blowing how connected the food is with the with your mood and your mm-hmm. mental and, and emotional health. So we, you need to watch what you eat. Yeah. Totally. And, yeah. and, and be aware of what um, is good for you and where is not really good. As yeah. we always say in... in all the episodes it's what it's good for you it doesn't need to be good for other people yes yes exactly again it's being uh mindful about how that particular food makes you feel and um and find those by individual ways uh that works for you Mm -hmm. yeah that's right. actually it's a good uh way to uh to start uh doing a journal when you are uh, paying attention on what you are eating and just uh, keeping a food journal. And uh, you can start to see, like, it, you can write it down, like, okay, today I had this. Mm-hmm. This is how I felt after that. And uh, it's a super cool way to start uh, journaling and to start uh, being um, present and mindful about uh, the connection between your food, your diet, and your mental and emotional state yeah that's right it, when you write a journal of what you eat it gives you so much information that you didn't even know is you you were not conscious about it exactly and so, you can do the same for your emotions hmm. yeah like because... keeping a journal for your emotions also like yeah how how you how, how your day was uh what happened uh during the day and how that made you feel uh how did you react to that uh, situation and how maybe how you could have uh, reacted in a different way? Because many times what happens is that, you know, something is happening to you, you react in a way and it makes you feel bad. And then you just leave it there. But if you write it down and you write out a different story to that, next time when it happens to you, it can uh, help to react in a different way. So you are kind of healing those emotions and those uh, circles. Mm, I I really like that that idea, Eva. You're playing very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's you know it's being 
curious about uh, yourself, about your reactions and about your feelings. Because I, mm-hmm. I find it that many times uh, in, in today's society, it's like um, we are not allowed to feel our feelings. Everyone has to be the same and everyone has to act the same way. And you shouldn't feel anger. You shouldn't feel um, um, you shouldn't be afraid. You know, it's like uh, everyone should be in, in like this um, square, you know, like in the box, in the same box. And, and we shouldn't be feeling different, uh, different because when you are feeling different, then uh, you are not, not fitting into that same box. Into uh, the system. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and many times it's like everyone is just like suppressing their feelings because I shouldn't be feeling that way. Yeah. Or, or because it's, it's a negative feeling. But mm-hmm. negative and positive, it's but it's in everyone you know and they can live in harmony it's just uh, we have to accept it and we have to be curious about it yeah and that happened to me a few years ago when I had my my first baby Uh, I I was on the my 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 thinking it was that I could do everything that I needed need help I can do everything myself oh. you know and i <laughs> have a to-do list a, such a huge to-do list mm. and people told me i think you need you need some help no 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 I, ha- I have to do it myself you know yeah and i i didn't accept it you know that that i couldn't you know that it is good i i i was not minus to to ask for help you know yeah yeah, be- yeah, yeah, because it, it's that. Yeah, exactly. You're not, not because I think it's sometimes that, uh, especially to new moms, I would say it's like I'm a superwoman. I can do everything, and mm-hmm. I should be able I to should, do. You know, I yes, have I. To. Sh- but I think it it also comes from the outside, you know, yes, from our course. environment and from the mm-hmm. society in general. That you know, just because you became a mom, it doesn't mean that you have to stop. Um, doing your profession you have to you still have to be sexy you still have to be a wife you still have to do everything that you were doing before even though mm-hmm. you just gave him birth and it's mm-hmm. not like that you know yeah. motherhood is a, a huge uh, journey and in the beginning and not just in the beginning later on just accept that you need help it's okay to ask for help and exactly. it's okay to yeah yeah um it's okay to need to feel guilty because i was feeling guilty you know yeah yes oh guilt that's a nasty one (laughs) yes (laughs) but we have so much yes it's it's so true and not just mothers guilt is is a really uh, really nasty feeling and it uh, it makes us push ourselves way over our limits way Mm -hmm. over so i think we have to embrace that um what our emotional needs are and we have to embrace that we can't do everything we don't have to do everything we can ask for help and it's totally fine to to ask for help Mm -hmm. and that's very good to have a journal that's it's a very good idea yeah 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 Yeah, because there you can start to be more conscious about what's going on Mm -hmm. in your mind and in your heart where you're feeling yeah and where come from all those things totally yeah Mm mm-hmm Okay. Yeah, I think one of the things that uh, also helped me uh, a lot on on healing many emotional um, uh, emotional uh, problems I had and difficulties I had was uh, uh, start practicing uh, gratitude and us uh, and seeking for joy actively in my life. And this is actually something I learned at uh, the training we were taking at IIN because uh, they were talking about that. And I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. Let's try it. So um, when I started to practice it, it was super powerful. Um, um, Aina was, um, I think she was like six months old or so. And and I was overwhelmed. I I really didn't have time for self-care. I didn't have time for uh, to do anything uh, more than, than caring for my uh, kids. So I found that uh, practicing gratitude was kind of a, a self-care practice that I could incorporate in, into my life. So I was like, okay, let's give it a try. 
So after uh, each, each evening, once the uh, kids were in the bed or before I would go to bed, I would just uh, sit there and, and go through my day and think about things that, uh, that I was grateful for. And in the beginning, um, I would list three things that were as simple as, uh, I know, I'm grateful uh, I could drink my coffee uh, warm today. Because mm-hmm. that, that wasn't something that happened <laughs> often to me in the beginning. And so you really have to, you, you really don't have to think about huge things to be grateful for. But I would, I would really suggest you to actively look for new things every single day. Because it's easy to fall into a circle when I'm, okay, I'm grateful for this, that, that. And you list all the time the three, uh, th- the three things that you are grateful for. But if you start looking for activities for uh, new stuff, you will be more mindful. You will be more present in your day. And uh, you will feel much, uh, much better. You will feel more joy in your life. And actually, uh, I can tell this from my experience that it, it can help you in, in very difficult situations as well. Like when you are going through a very difficult period of your life, don't give up this practice because it can really help you uh, keep going. I, uh, it happened to me last year when I lost my mom unexpectedly and, and I, I kept doing this practice. And oftentimes I was like, uh, I, I felt like, you know, there is nothing I could be uh, grateful for, but I said that and I was like, of course there are things that I can still be grateful for, even though I felt like the world has collapsed around me. So it's a very powerful practice and I can only recommend uh, it to everyone to start incorporating into their uh, life. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's a very good idea and it's a very good practice. It's an, and um, pay attention on the basic things, Don't, like yeah. you said, Eva, not on the huge things because yeah. it will give you so much power. Totally power and, and pleasure and you will you will realize that there are things you can be grateful for and mm-hmm. by uh, searching for these small joys in your life you will realize that you are having more and more mm-hmm. in your days yeah as i think as much gratitude gratitude you have mm, very more good things will happen to you totally Totally, like because you are... Ask to the universe, you know. Exactly, to, that's the you... energy you are putting out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so we... Um, I don't know how would you say, encourage all of totally. you to, to, to to use more the gratitude. Totally, yeah. Mm-hmm. Look, for, look for joy in your life, because there is joy. There is joy, even when you feel like there isn't. There is. Okay, all this concludes today's episode of In Harmony with Vitality on the mental emo- emotional aspect of your dimensional health. We truly hope that this episode has provided you with new and insightful information, tools and tips empowering you to start working on your health goals. In which dimension would you like to begin working? We would love to know please come and share with us on our YouTube channel or Instagram account. The program notes contain all the links. In the next episode, we will be discussing the other dimension of our multidimensional health. So be sure to tune in next week. Until then, stay healthy and remember that progress is more important than perfection. Begin your journey with a small but consistent steps. Stay tuned for our next episode next week. Take Thank care. you everyone for joining us. See you next week. See you. Bye-bye. And that's a wrap for another empowering episode of In Harmony with Vitality, where we encourage you to empower your journey, embrace your vitality, and unleash the potential within. If you have any question, topics you would like to cover, or if you want to share your own journey, feel free to connect with us on social media. We love hearing from our community. You can find all links in the show notes. Remember, this podcast is all about embracing your uniqueness and making choices that align with your inner wisdom. Your journey to a healthier and happier life is yours to share. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button 
so you never miss an episode. And if you love what you heard, leave us a review. Your feedback means the world to us, and it helps others discover the podcast. As we sign up, always remember, life is an incredible journey, and you hold the power to make it extraordinary. Tune in next time as we continue our quest for harmony and vitality. Until then, take good care of yourself, honor your uniqueness, and stay in harmony with vitality.